My name is Alex Wallace, and today we're going to talk about aromatase inhibitors and men on testosterone replacement therapy. Quick preface, I am not a doctor. I don't pretend to be a doctor, although I do hire doctors and nurse practitioners and other medical professionals at my clinic, Steel Health and Hormone Center. So we are a preventative medicine, regenerative medicine, and hormone replacement therapy clinic located in Pittsburgh, but we do telemedicine all across the United States. There's a couple things we need to understand. We need to understand what aromatase is. We need to understand the role of estrogens in the male body. We need to understand steps you can take to naturally lower estrogens. And then we need to look at the use case of aromatase inhibitors in men on testosterone replacement therapy. First, what is aromatase? What are we trying to inhibit? Aromatase is an enzyme that's basically responsible for converting androgens into estrogens. So androstenedione dione into estrione and testosterone into estradiol. And that's Predominantly what we're talking about, especially in a clinical sense, is the testosterone and estradiol. That's what we're generally looking at on blood work on male patients on testosterone replacement therapy. You inhibit that with an aromatase inhibitor, and that basically prevents these androgens from converting into estrogens, and it will, on the serum, lower these estrogen levels. There's two different types of aromatase inhibitors that we use currently. There's steroidal and non-steroidal. Almost always your clinic is gonna use non-steroidal. That's typically what we use. We see the steroidal aromatase inhibitors in guys that are, they're blasting gear. That's not really a clinical setting. There's guys that, you know, we help a lot of guys that are trying to come off of that lifestyle and go legit. And I hear a lot of the steroidal aromatase inhibitors such as exomestane. That seems to be very powerful. And these steroidal aromatase inhibitors permanently render those aromatase enzymes completely inert. Where the non-steroidal, there's, it's not completely and permanently inert. So some people fear about a rebound effect. So let's say you take an, a non-steroidal aromatase inhibitor like anastrozole or letrozole, People are afraid that when they come off, they're gonna see this huge rebound of, of estrogens. I'll be honest with you, based off of the blood work, I have not seen that, although it's theoretically possible, I just haven't seen it. So if you've seen something different, let me know in the comments down below. I would say that based off of the blood work, I've seen both guys on gear and guys doing it the healthy way on testosterone replacement therapy. The exomestane is definitely more powerful than an astrozole, and then letrozole is also more powerful than an astrozole. So we generally, at my clinic, Steel Health and Hormone Center, we generally stick with an astrozole. It seems to get the job done without completely lowering the estrogen. You don't always want to lower estrogens indiscriminately. So if you're in a clinic that just does the cookie cutter thing, 200 milligrams of test, one milligram of an astrozole every week, and then if you're worried about your hair, one milligram of finasteride every single day, I would encourage you to really think if that's the best approach for you. Again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not telling you what you should or shouldn't do. I'm just asking you to consider the possibility. That might be a medication you don't actually need. Estrogens have an important role in the male body. It's not just a female hormone. It's also important in the male body. First and foremost, it's responsible for libido. So estrogens have an excitatory and inhibitory effect on, on libido. If your estradiol or estrogens are way too high, you may suffer from low libido. If your estrogens are way too low, you may suffer from low libido. So you wanna have enough in there, a therapeutic dose of estrogens to actually have that positive effect on libido. And every guy's a little bit different. Um, we're gonna get into the levels we like to see, but just understand that just because you may have low libido on TRT, it may not be a result of estrogen that's too high, could actually be a result of estrogens that are too low, or it could be something completely unrelated. Estrogen is also important in bone health. So you don't need a ton of estrogens as a man to support healthy bones, but you do need some. There's guys that come to us that are trying to do this on their own. They're doing the, the black market stuff and they'll come in and their estradiol is in single digits, which is like crazy low, way too low. I can't see a circumstance where somebody should be below 20, but a lot of these guys will come in, take an exomestane or letrozole or just way too much an astrozole and their estradiol is, is low. And even if they don't feel bad, you wanna have 
a therapeutic level of estrogen in you to make sure that you're maintaining bone health. Again, it doesn't have to be super high, but you definitely don't want it super low. And here's something that's interesting too. Estrogens actually play a role in creativity and verbal memory in men. I don't wanna see beyond the data here. And if you're interested in seeing all the sources and a comprehensive overview of this, I actually have this article on my blog on our website, steelhealthandhormonecenter.com. So if you want all the, the links of the research that I did, that's that's on our website and it's on our blog post. I'll link it down below. If you administer estradiol therapy to men, it seems to improve certain cognitive attributes, but I'd be seeing beyond the data to say that if we lower estrogens too much, that it would lower verbal memory and creativity. But I will say that guys that come in with super low estradiol, they feel off, they feel foggy, they feel bad. So there are very important roles of estrogen in the male body. That's why you don't want to indiscriminately lower it. Now there is a use case for AIs, but first let's get into the levels that it seems guys feel the best at, some steps that you can do without adding an AI, and then a use case for aromatase inhibition. We like to see guys, or at least what most guys settle in at and feel the best, is when their estradiol to testosterone ratio is somewhere between 1 in 20 and 1 in 25. So let's say you have a testosterone ratio of 800, we're looking between, what would that be? 30 and 40 of estradiol. That seems to be the sweet spot there. Some guys need it a little bit lower, some guys need it a little bit higher, but that's generally true. So between, I guess 20, if you're looking at testosterone to estrogen, or testosterone to estradiol rather, 20 to one, 25 to one, somewhere in there, most guys feel, feel excellent. And there is some variation, but not a lot. There's a couple steps that you can take if you need to make an adjustment to your estradiol to testosterone ratio that don't involve an AI. And the first one has to do with getting leaner. So it's pretty well understood that the more body fat that you have, the more aromatase enzyme will act on on the androgens in your body and this is like a vicious cycle and this is why some guys that are you know overweight they can suffer from low testosterone more frequently than very fit guys uh, your body has these androgens the excess body fat will have more aromatase activity which will increase estrogens the estrogens then hit your brain that tells your body to produce less androgens and you're just caught in this vicious cycle of being too fat so you produce more estrogens, which causes your body to have less androgens, which causes low energy, which makes it hard for you to get out of that cycle and you basically stay fat. So testosterone has been a fantastic medication to get guys leaner. It's not leaning you up. It doesn't burn fat per se in the conventional sense, but it does have a positive impact on body composition and can basically end that vicious cycle that a lot of overweight guys get into. So the first thing that you can do if you're on testosterone replacement therapy, or even if you're not, and you could be dealing with some high estrogenic side effects, is just get leaner. So that's first and foremost, you gotta exercise, you gotta eat right. That's gonna go a long way to improving your outcomes on testosterone replacement therapy or just in life. The second thing that you can do has to do with shot frequency. This is, shouldn't be controversial, but it's kind of crazy that some clinics still do this. Some clinics will do a testosterone injection once per week. And if you're with an old school PCP or urologist, they'll do testosterone injections once every two weeks. That seems to have a detrimental effect. So you have this huge bulbous rise in testosterone and then aromatase is acting on that. So you have your estrogen spike too. So everything's kind of out of range. And then by the time you take your next shot, you might be out of range in the opposite direction. So you're basically going from these huge peaks and troughs. So it's like this. It's just not a great way to administer testosterone replacement therapy, in my opinion, in my non-medical opinion. And that's not what we do at Steel Health and Hormone Center. We basically do a twice weekly subcutaneous injection of testosterone. Not only is that easier for most guys to handle than just darting yourself with a huge needle, but it does seem to smooth out the estradiol and testosterone effects. That leads me to my third point, which is, I basically already said it, it has to do with the administration of testosterone. So creams work well. We don't really use creams uh, because it 
it's less reliable than the shot, at least in our experience. Subcutaneous injections, or at least shallow IM, so a shorter needle, also seems to have a more prolonged release of testosterone. And as a result, you don't have a high enough peak to really like deal with all issues and your trough is also a little bit lower. It's a more sustained release. So if you can do those three things, if you can you know, lose some body fat, if you can increase your frequency and then use either a shallow IM or sub Q injection of your testosterone, that seems to have an impact on lowering your estradiol or at least putting you in that one to 20, one to 25 range of estradiol to testosterone. All that being said, we do use aromatase inhibitors at Steel Health and Hormone Center when we have to. There's a couple things that, that we see. The first one is some guys do come to us and they are obese. So I can sit there and tell them, okay, take this testosterone and just lose weight. But again, you're aromatizing a lot more than you probably would be if you were leaner in a lot of gentlemen. So we may need to use this AI, maybe forever, but hopefully in the short term, until your body composition changes for the better. Maybe you do need other medications like semaglutide or trisepatide to help you with your weight loss. We do that a lot as well. But it's something that if you're if you're already obese and you're working on it, you're trying to get better, you may need an AI at least for the short term. There's other guys that need AIs for the long term. And these are guys that are just they, they hyper aromatize. For some reason, everything looks good. They're below 20% body fat. They're doing subcutaneous injections. They're doing multiple injections per week instead of just one big bulbous dose. And they're still just aromatizing a ton. And they're dealing with estrogenic side effects. With these guys, it is what it is. Okay, we're gonna use the lowest effective dose of uh, aromatase inhibitor to basically make sure that they're having the therapeutic benefits of testosterone without spilling over so much into estrogen. Yes, you can lower your dose. I know that sounds like blasphemy to a lot of these guys that are watching this that are probably on testosterone replacement therapy. You can lower your dose, but there is this subsection of gentlemen that if we lower their dose enough to get their estradiol in that, that ratio that we like, they start getting side effects of low testosterone again. So it's like, you can't bring their testosterone low enough so the aromatase enzyme doesn't act enough to lower their estradiol without introducing side effects of low testosterone. So you have to do something. And for these guys, these gentlemen, yes, they use an AI. And we monitor their blood work. We make sure that it's something that we're on top of because things change. Your body composition changes. Your body changes a lot over the years too. So you don't wanna just set it and forget it. You wanna get frequent blood work to make sure that everything looks good, you feel good, and you stay healthy. So that's my opinion on aromatase inhibitors. Just to recap, first thing, aromatase, works by converting androgens into estrogens. Secondly, estrogens are extremely important in the male body and indiscriminate use of AIs is no good. Thirdly, there's natural things that you can do to lower your estradiol without going on to an AI. And then fourthly, there is a time and a place for an AI, but that should be on a case by case basis. This should not just be cookie cutter stuff. I see a lot of that. Guys will jump into a clinic and they get the same exact thing. 200 makes a test, one milligram of aromatase inhibitor of anastrozole, and then they're probably on finasteride too. That's a little too cookie cutter. That's not what we do at Steel Health and Hormone Center. We do an individualized medical approach. I say we are the white glove approach to TRT, and that's my opinion. So look guys, if you're looking for a good clinic to get involved with preventative medicine, regenerative medicine, and that white glove approach to testosterone replacement therapy, I'll link both that blog post with all of the articles that I cited here and that's also our website. You can fill out a contact form, steelhealthandhormonecenter.com. We'll be in touch within 24 hours. We'll make sure that you're connected with the right practitioner. We get the comprehensive blood work that you need and we'll get you pointed in the right direction. So look, if you learned something in this video, do me a favor, like this video. If you're interested in content like this, whether it's fitness, regenerative medicine, preventative medicine, anything related to basically health, wellness, and alternative medicine, subscribe to this channel. Again, my name's Alex Wallace. I'm the owner of Steel Health and Hormone Center and Wallace Fitness Center, which is a wellness center. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next video.